Welcome to Noonday Bible Class, Wednesday Noonday Bible Class at uh, Community Baptist Church in Santa Rosa, California. Where our pastor is uh, Reverend Dr. H. Lee Turner. My name is Brother Jim Kennedy, and Sister Maria Dreyer is the one who types these lessons so you can follow along with us. We have another good lesson. Uh, in session three, confidence in the midst of uh, conflict. And if you have your Bibles, uh, we'll be turning to Genesis 13, 5 through 11, and 14 through 18. The point is, uh, trust God when conflicts disrupt your relationships. Okay, um, we start off with scripture and uh, also. We want to pray for the sick and shut in. Uh, we want to pray for Frederick Brady, uh, Patricia Jones, Margaret Michaels, Roger Walker, Pennsylvania Hopkins, Lenina Marie Johnson, Vince Harper, Joseph Hampton, uh, uh, Louise Oliver, uh, Alaya Small, uh, Dean Beckman, Brian Gordon, Georgia Payton. We lift up George, uh, George Rucker, Mighty Harris, uh, Sharon Rockstead, uh, Marion Nelson, Beverly Combs, Elise uh, Rucker, and Baltimore Duncan. We also pray for our pastor, Reverend Dr. H. D. Turner, for protection, guidance, and blessing. Pray for uh, CBC staff, Maria Dreyer, Sister Maria Dreyer, and myself. We pray for minister, Reverend Parker, and Reverend Francis. We pray for the series, the ministries, the teachers, and church family. Uh, Alaya Small and family for healing and strength. And Sister George Payton for health and healing. Sister Tracy Burke for healing. Our brother Nick Carter for health and healing. And brother Michael Peterson Jr. for healing. And the McDowell family at the loss of Patricia uh, Patrick uh, McDowell. And the Lowe family for the loss of Dan Louise Lowe. Uh, we lift those uh, names up in prayer. We start off with scripture. I want to read from Psalm, or from Isaiah 40. Uh, we'll start at 28 through 31. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of ends of the earth, is not, and neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increased strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. May blessing be to the hearing and reading of Isaiah 40, uh, 28 to 31. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you today and just praise your holy name, Lord. Your name above all other names, Lord. We lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time we're going to spend in your word, Lord. We pray for all the prayer requests that were mentioned, Lord. We know the need for each one of them, Lord. We pray that you will be done in each case, Lord, that you will give them the understanding that they need to overcome whatever they're going through, Lord, that they will uh, just depend on you and, uh, and in your ways, Lord. And Lord, we just pray for our lesson today, Lord. Give those out there watching, Lord, give them the ears to hear and eyes to see your ways, Lord, that we may, be, that we may glorify you with our uh, obedience to your holy word, Lord. So as we begin this lesson, Lord, we just pray that the Holy Spirit will minister to each one listening. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we pray this all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay. Uh, we pray. Uh, the point is trust God when conflict disrupts the relationship to so start confidences in the midst of crisis. Question one was the small things you see somewhat, someone fight about and they have dirty dishes, so nobody did the dishes, so they get an argument. The passage is 35, 5 to 11. 
and 1480, the Bible meets life. I learned how to sail when I was a kid. When I think of sailing, I think of one word, tension. From the moment you board the sailboat to the time you go ashore, you are constantly managing tension. The tension balances the boat as you constantly uh, shift the weight of your body. The tension of the ripple current that presses against the rudder. The tension of the main sail rope tugging at your hands. Just, uh, just like sailing, we are always managing tension in the life. For example, tensions in finance. Tensions are how we respond to news and uh, the politics. Um, the tensions of maintaining healthy habits, the tension of growing power of dirty laundry. But one of the most difficult tensions we must manage in relate is relationship tension, uh, relational tension. Uh, tension. We can escape the, the, the tension in some, in some relationships may have been stirred like a steady current for a long time. Others suddenly come out of nowhere like a heavy gust of wind. Well, let's take uh, some clues from Abraham to see how he navigates the waters of his relationships. Okay. Okay, Genesis 13, 5 to 8. And Lot also, which went with Abraham, had flocks and herds and tents, and the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance were great, was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abraham's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanites and the Pezzasites dwell there in the land. And Abraham said to Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen, for we are brethren. As we saw in the last session, Abraham displayed a lack of trust when he took his family to Egypt. Even so, during this sojourn, God allowed Abraham to acquire uh, sheep, ox, and he asks, and men servants and maid servants, and she asks, and camel. Genesis 12, 16. When Abraham uh, left Egypt and returned to Canaan, he returned with a lot more than he left with, and a whole lot more, and his nephew Lot apparently did as well. Their collective wealth made traveling together extremely difficult. This created tension between the herdsmen of Abraham cattle and the herdsmen of Lot cattle. It was a turf war type of conflict. Hey, your donkey are drinking all the water. Oh yeah, well, your sheep are eating all the grass. You get the sense of the tension heating up. As leaders of a large assembly, Abraham had a choice, he could ignore the conflict or he could confront it. Abraham chose to confront it. And Abraham said unto Lot, let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen, and we, for we are brethren. Abraham didn't run from the conflict. He had the courage to face it. Head on, and he did not, uh, so by first uh, thinking of his relationship with Lot, we be brothers. We face the same decision anytime conflicts arise in our relationship. Do we ignore the issue or confront it? Do we keep on moving toward unity be, uh, because the tension and the conflict is uh, just not worth it? This is especially true in the church and with relationships among believers. We are to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, Ephesians 4.3. We cannot control the attitude and actions of another individual or group, but we can control our attitude and actions. We must evaluate our role by asking, am I doing my part to maintain peace? Have I done everything I can do to resolve the conflict? I have the honor of pastoring uh, my 
Falls City Church in Detroit, Michigan. I am also privileged to lead an amazing staff team. Uh, from the very beginning, I knew the enemy would be fired up, uh, would be fired up to destroy the unity of our team. What better way to destroy our works than to stir up tension among the leaders? The staff had always been my family, but I have stayed on the offense against the enemy's scheme. I have implemented the following phase in my monthly review with each staff member. An imaginary conversation deserves a real conversation. For example, have you ever been having an Im imagery conversation uh, with someone in your head while driving alone in your car, going for a walk, or trying to fall asleep? That uh, imaginary, com imaginary conversation could be a signal that it is time to have a real conversation with that person. That's what Ab Abraham did with Lot. They talked, and Abraham confronted the issue. When done correctly, confronting can show the other person how much uh, we care. It demonstrates how much the individual matters to us. Over and over, this practice has prevented a lot of unnecessary conflict within our team and church. The alternate approach of ignoring the issue does not solve anything. In fact, by ignoring a tiny issue, we allow it to fester uh, fester in, in anything. The alternative approach to ignoring the issue does not solve anything. In fact, by ignoring a tiny issue, we allow it to fester and grow. Over time, you can discover a gigantic wall in a relationship that should never have been built up in the first place. Don't fall prey to thinking that you are overreacting or what you are making a big deal out of nothing. Make it a big deal before it becomes a big deal. Abraham modeled that for us in his relationship with God. What uh, are some things that make conflict worse in our culture? We're not coming together and uh, solve it, uh, let it uh, fester, I guess, and uh, not paying attention to it. Uh, and, uh, you could answer that too. Genesis 13, 9, 11. Is not the whole land before thee separate thyself, I pray thee, from me? If thou wilt thou take the left hand, then I will go to the right. For if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoran. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and then they separated themselves, the one from another. Abraham also lowered the temperature of the tension by walking into his uh, conversation with Lot without the goal of winning the conversation. The goal in any conflict cannot be about who is right. It must be about making it right. Eh? To make things right, we must be willing to put the other person first. Abraham said, if thou will take the left hand, then I will go to the right. For if thou departs to the right hand, then I will go to the left. You go first, Lot. Whoever plot uh, the land you want, whenever you plot the land you want, go ahead and take it. I'll take what's left. Abraham, uh, Abraham demonstrates the importance of putting the needs of others before our needs. A principle Paul spelled out centuries later, letting nothing be done through strife or late glory, but in Loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Look not every man to his own thing, but every man also of the things of others. Philippians 2, 3, and 4. Any principles from God's word is the right one. 
But let's be honest, putting the needs of others before ours own it doesn't always sit so well, especially if the conflict situation, conflict situation, it, it can be done, but we must humble ourselves first. Humanity is the key when it comes to solving relation, uh, relational tension. God will have nothing to do with self-centered, prideful uh, stands. As Peter wrote, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble, 1 Peter 5.5. 5. Pride knocks you down, humility lifts you up. Amen. Consider the promise and position God made to Abraham. God has given this land to him. Abraham did not have to make Lot such an offer. He could have told Lot to take the worst piece of property and then still might have been viewed as gracious. After all, God has given the land to Abraham. Though Abraham could, couldn't have said, it's time for you and your calling, uh, calling uh, herdsmen to leave and get off my property. Keep in mind, Abraham did not know Lot or would choose land outside the promised land. Abraham lowered the temperature, uh, lowered the temperature and tension by raising the level of his humanity, not by allowing pride or his rights to control the situation. Amen. As humble as Abraham was, his descendant Jesus was far greater model of humanity. Uh, Jesus willingly and gladly laid down his life for us, taking the death we deserved as his own. As Christ's followers, we are to lead uh, in, unto the example and practice humility. The, uh, the only way we can truly maintain humility in any conflict is to run our words and actions to a filter of Jesus. Amen. This is a lesson we have to learn every day, but it is, but it is a lesson, a principle worth fighting for. When we do so, a lot of conflict can be avoided. Altogether, the relationship can be restored. What do we appreciate about the way Abraham and Lot resolved the difference? They come in agreement. They, they worked together on the, the situation, and uh, they came up with the uh, uh, answer. So it worked out fine. Genesis 13, 14, and 18. And the Lord said to Abraham and that Lot was separated from him. Lift up now thy eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which you seest to thee will I give it and to the seed forever. And I will make the seed as the dust of the earth so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall the seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abraham removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of uh, Moray, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. Tragically for Lot, he made a poor decision. He may have thought he was getting the better land, land that was well watered everywhere, even the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, Genesis 13, 10. But his de uh, decision moved him away from his uncle whom God had all obviously blessed and into a place of compromise. Notice lot downward progression. He chose the land that was outside Canaan, the land promised to Abraham. Lot, um, Fetched his tent toward Solomon, uh, verse 12. But later we find that he dwelt in Solomon, 14, 12. And finally we see him uh, sat in the gate of Solomon, a place where the city leaders sat. Lot eventually moved from being connected to Abraham to being a lead, leader in a wicked city. Abraham, however, stayed where he was and maintained his trust in God. God reaffirmed his promise to Abraham. He told Abraham 
uh, to open up his eyes, look around all of the land as far as his vision could see, and beyond it would be given to Abraham and his descendants, even though the land was still in the hands of the Canaanites, and Salah still had not yet conceived, nothing had changed from God's perspective. Right? Sitting aside on our own human viewpoint to see things from God's perspective can be difficult. That it can be doubly doubt difficult when things seem to be far out of reach and a solution seems imaginable. Even when we hear Jesus' word with men, and this is impossible with God, all things are possible, Matthew 19, 26. God keeps his word to us, but his timing is not always in line. We are scheduled. When we feel let down or when things don't go as planned, the last thing we should do is shut down, close our eyes, and exclude God. Instead, we should do what God told Abraham to do. Look, around, look, look around, look up. God is still there, and he has not abandoned us or his promises. Amen. The situation between Abraham and Lot was solved quickly. Uh, but what do we do when our conflicts don't resolve so quickly? We trust God to work and we trust him to work in his time. We typically want a quick resolution, but the resolution uh, takes t uh, two parties. Amen. We uh, may need to pray and ask God to work in our hearts of the other person. We have to come to grips with the tension between God's time and our time. Trusting that his timing is better, his timing is perfect, can be difficult to swallow, especially when it comes to relational tension. We need to surrender our time to him. Reconciliation and forgiveness are not the same thing. We strive for both to take place, but reconciliation depends on the willingness of both parties to reconcile. While we can't control reconciliation, we can forgive. Forgiving another person can be extremely uh, hard, extremely hard, but it is the most healing thing uh, to do. It takes two for reconciliation to occur, but we can still uh, forgive regardless of how the other person responds, Ephesians 4.32. Forgive and trust God to work in the hearts of others. We keep trusting that God will break through the wall. He keeps uh, trusting the Holy Spirit to convict as we do our part to forgive and help manage the tension. Abraham responds by moving his tent to Hebron, where he built another altar, another place to worship. Scripture does not Scripture does not reveal what Abraham said or prayed as he worshiped, but I wonder if he claimed his, uh, calmed, I wonder if he calmed his mind before God by praying about the strife that occurred and praise him for the solution that occurred. Likewise, we are to maintain an attitude of worship. Whether or not difficulties have been resolved, a continual attitude of worship and pray it keeps us learning uh, leaning on Christ and gives us confidence in the midst of conflict. What has God proven to you that He will take care of you? He, he, he promises, oh, he says, I'll never leave you forsake you, and he promises to be with you no matter what you're going through. How can I trust in God's help us during the difficult times? But he, but he's there, he says so in his word, you know. And that's, uh, you gotta be true to his word, you gotta be obedient. And he tells us uh, that he's there, never leave us, forsake us, and he's always with us. It's his timing, not ours. But we were supposed to, uh, you know, uh, stand fast. Sometimes you stand and wait for his salvation to, to take place, you know. So, uh, we just got to learn that day by day we get stronger as we obedience as you see him working in your life. Engage. 
The world has vastly different views of handling conflict in God's word. How would you respond to a friend who made the following statement? Choose one. The most important part of it, resolving a conflict is sharing the entire truth. To refuse to listen to anyone who holds the point of view, I think it's best if we just don't talk about it. We can do that for the week. Put that out and right there. And live it out. We are, to, we are to trust God when conflict disrupts our relationship. Right? And it's a key. Choose one of the following applications. Pray. As an act of worship, lift up those that you might have relational tension with right now. Also, as you pray, a tension from your past might come to the forefront of your mind. Pray for those people as well. Check your pride. In comparison to Jesus, what is the level of your humanity? Go to God and ask him to reveal uh, where your pride might be getting the best of you. Remember, pride knocks you down. Humility lifts you up. Right? And reconcile. What imaginary conversation have you had with, uh, been having with a person that you don't need to have a real conversation with? Pick up the phone, set up the meeting, and have that difficult conversation. So that's three things you can apply. And uh, that was a great lesson and as we go through uh, trust God and conflicts which uh, disrupt your relationship. Uh, let's bow in a word of prayer. Father God, we come before you today and we thank you for your word today, Lord, about uh, being humble and praying for uh, and uh, to uh, head conflicts straight on, Lord, and, and be humble as we do it, Lord, that we uh, will settle the, uh, the situation before it gets uh, too, uh, too out of hand, Lord. And Lord, that uh, you would show us the way, Lord, and humble us uh, that we would come together with a decision that uh, would uh, work out for your glory, for your best and your glory, Lord. And that uh, we would be uh, remain friends with whoever we have conflict with, Lord. Like uh, Lot and uh, Abraham came to the conclusion that they settled it head on and that you were blessed. Uh, uh, Lord, we thank you for this uh, word today and we also thank you for these lessons, Lord. And, we thank you for those out there watching and listening, Lord, that they would gain something from these lessons, Lord. So touch them uh, in a special way today, Lord, or whenever they watch this, that they may grow in, in your word and, and grow in strength and uh, love you more day in, day out. We thank you for this day and we give you the praise, honor, and glory. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So we, the next lesson, if you want to study it, it will be confidence in the season of uncertainty. And this will come from Genesis 15, 1 to 6, and 13 through 16. It will be our next lesson. So until next Wednesday, have a great week. God bless you. And uh, keep in your word.